second episode of our, our series of podcasts and uh, we managed to get David Cross on video link two meetings in a row without any issues so this is a record um, and I, without, without any swearing you mean I just I want to kick off straight away so thank you uh, Dave for joining us I want to kick off by saying is David the god godfather of the weighing room which, which he's been telling us he is he, he says he rules the roost in the weighing room is this true uh, for self praise, there's no praise. I'm not sure the best way to put it. I wouldn't quite say, I wouldn't say I'd be that. I, the cross father of the way, I'm probably one of the oldest ones in there. But Davy, I was looking, looking at your age, you still have three and a half years on me. Um, you must be one of the eldest in the way room over in Ireland now. Yeah, one of the oldest there. Um, um, myself, Ruby, and Barry were, 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 all, were all the same age, same year, born the same year. Barry's half a year. Younger than me, and I'm happier, younger than Ruby, and yeah. So um, I don't think there's anyone older. I think probably Puppy, Puppy Power looks older, all right. But, he, de uh, he definitely looks older. You look every day, of, mind you, you look every day of 40, though, to be fair. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Oh, man, I thought it was doing well, to be honest. <laughs> come on, Crossy, come on, Crossy. We've all said you've had a very tough paper round. The tough. Well, I, I think I have anyway. I've just sent some products from raw materials there I have to use, um, which hopefully will depreciate my age for by about 10 years. So we'll see about that. I do look about 50, um, but I don't. I, I think I'm looking in better nick than Davy, to be fair. I suppose it's all about how you feel rather than how you look. I, 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 feel, I feel as good as ever, so I'm happy to look. Yeah, I'm... I'm I feel like an old man, look like an old man, but I still think, in my own head, I still think I'm about 16 years of age. But you have to be, think, you have to be like can, that being a jockey, don't you? Yeah, we live in a Peter Pan sort of world, you know. On one side, there's a young lad that's 17, and the other side, you know, 25. And, you know, for, an, for a, a career like 40, and you're, you're supposed to be gone out of it, you know what I mean? So it's, it's a kind of a Peter Pan world, but us three, we're kind of trying, the young lads around the way room keep us young as we go along. I, I thought when I started that, but the different lads in the way room were old, you know what I mean? But um, now that I'm that age, I don't think I'm old at all. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm the very same way. I see like young John Joe O'Neill comes into the way room there and he's a uh, washboard belly on him and things like that. and. It makes it actually makes us. It makes me certainly work a lot harder to um, work on your physique and that because you do from the age of thirty-five. I don't know about you, Davy, but you do start getting the middle age spread a little bit. So you have to work a bit harder, on it, don't you? Uh, yeah, I'm a bit different, I suppose. I'm looking at well, look here. Uh, my my weight is, is, is a huge issue for me, so I'm kind of on it the whole time. I I I'm 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 kept keep fit the whole time. You know, I can never let it go. So. Like 10, 11, there's 10, 11s there all summer long and then maidens and things and 10, 11s it can be a struggle for me at times. So I'm, I'm, I'm always, um, I'm always on the narrow side rather. I don't, I didn't hit that spread yet. Jeez, <laughs> I, I, start, I've definitely hit it. I have to, I have to work on it now. Doing my leg raises and trying to, trying to keep a bit of a six pack. What's the heaviest part of you? Oh, Jesus, I don't know. I would say it's definitely not my brain. I don't know. Well, you have a big set of ears on you, but I have seen you in the shower before. Huge, huge, huge lugs on me, yeah. You know what they say about the fellow with the big ears? Go on. I don't know, I just, you know what they say? <laughs> big set of ear muffs. Hey, well. <laughs> so, also, you, you wouldn't be, you'd take your time in the shower as well, you'd be one of the longest in the way room, would you? Yeah, I, I, I enjoy having... After, uh, it's only a matter I'd be wrecked after a day, that's all, it's good old, good old, uh, uh, just to give it a bit of time, that's all. I meant you had a lot to wash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, it's small but hard working. Small but hard working, yeah, fair enough. Well, fair enough. four kids I hear, so uh, d definitely works. Five. 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 Yeah. He's oh. a, a fair, a fair stallion. Yeah, I'm watching them here. They're running around, uh, running around here in front of me. So I'm kind of double jobbing at the moment. But what age are they all now, Davy? Um, sixteen, five, four, two, and nine months. She's just had one, huh? Yeah. 
Are you yeah. going to stop? Are you going to tie a knot in it now? I tell you, to be honest, I wanted to cover the bed with them. Uh, uh, keep <laughs> on, but I say, I say we're, 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 we're maxed out. It's a, so he, fair enough. He's locked down with five children, uh, and the age range of those children is, is quite quite big. Is that harder than your normal day job? Yeah, the, my, my, the 16-year-old doesn't live with me. She lives with her, her grandparents, but she's, you know, she's a big part of the family. And uh, we talk for most evenings on, on, on WhatsApp and all them things. And as regards the rest of them, it is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> I mean, like, I can take them... When, when they're uh, apart from each other, they are so, so good. They're brilliant children. They do everything they're supposed to do. But for some reason, when they're together, now I have a, I have a, a four-year-old and a five-year-old, and look, one is washing a bicycle here at the moment, and he doesn't know what he's doing, he's just pouring water over it, and the other one is holding the dog. That's never walked. Now, it's a, it's, a, it's a big dog here in the family. He never has a lead on him, so he's pulling her around the place. Um, but when they're together, they fight like cats and dogs. And when they're apart, they're just dream children. So um, try to try to keep them separated as much as we can. Yeah, I'd say you'll be you'll be glad you'll be glad to go back to work, won't you? I'd ride I'd ride five beginner chases in one day and be happy. To do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so baby, I asked Crossy last week what he's missing most about riding during lockdown, and he. You mentioned the competitive edge, but I've not really seen him be very competitive in a race before. Well, what are you actually missing? Um, I'm not missing it yet. Okay. I, I, I haven't had a holiday in quite a number of years with the kids and different for different reasons, racing. And there were times there I looked like I was going to be champion jockey. And, you know, we called off uh, different holidays and things for, for them reasons. So... At the moment, I'm happy. See, I'm, I'm the same. I'm the same as well, Davy. Because you like me, like we never ever take a break. You're as hungry for making money and work as I am. And this, I actually think this is great for us mentally and everything. Like we're not missing. I know we're we're missing three months, but we're not missing the. Uh, obviously, you're missing punch down over in Ireland, but we're not missing too much racing as such. And it's actually. I think for jump race and jump jockeys, it's actually brilliant having a break because it just, it's, we never ever probably, you're, you've been riding 25 years and I've probably 20 plus and um, we've never actually had a, you can never take a break off. Even when you're injured, you're thinking, right, I need to be back and you're on the, from the day you get injured, all you're thinking about is getting back as where now we know in England, there's no jump racing till July we can actually chill out and not even think about it, not look at a race and post, not look at entries and things like that. Do you feel a bit like that as well? Yeah, a little bit, but I'm more so, I, I, I love working. I love being busy. Um, I love doing stuff. Um, so, like, we've quite a number of broodmares here on the farm. Um, so just the last couple of weeks, I've been, I've been concentrating on them. I've never stopped going. I, 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 I just don't, I either do one or the other. I either go like hell or I just either sleep or do nothing. I'm yeah. very, I, I can be quite lazy. There's no in between with me. I, I don't go for walks. I don't go for walks or, or things like that. I just, I'm either going or I'm not going. It's, it's either zero or, or 100 miles an hour. I, do you know what, Davy? I'm the exact same. When I'm, I'm flat out every day, but then when I go on holidays, all I want to do is lie down and rest and fall asleep. Yeah. That's where my missus wants to do things. But it's funny yeah, that you said, it's funny there you said you're quite lazy because I was having a good old chat with a fella you used to live with who will remain nameless, but you used to live with him just outside. Mark Rand. <laughs> who said to me, you lived with him for a year. He said he was the most laziest man you'd ever meet in his whole life. And uh, you'd, you'd, have to, you'd have to give you a kick to get, get you up out of bed. He also told me there as well that you're some man, like for a man that doesn't drink, uh, well, not teetotal, because you, well, you're on the pipe now, so I suppose that my class is teetotal, but he said that um, you have no swallow, that you could down a pint, no problem. But he said also that you could never, he never seen you do it, but he says, yeah, Davy Russell always says he has no swallow. Can you elaborate on this? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I tell you, when I was when I was young, I never drank. I never had any interest in drinking. But um, you were right. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, well, stupid more so than anything. But uh, I went to uh, agricultural college for a year. Uh, Lord of mercy, my mother, she was brilliant. She, she wouldn't leave me go straight out without an education. I finished after fifth year. I just had enough. But uh, they, they, they made me um, go to agricultural college for a year, which was brilliant. It was great fun. Um, I was the youngest of the whole of the whole college. And, um, but... Uh, uh, when we used to go to the pub, I, I never drank, so I was just drinking 7-Up or whatever. But for a bet, I used to bet the lads that I could beat them drinking a pint. Obviously, there was no alcohol in it. And uh, I used to bet them fivers and, you know, two pounds, three pounds, whatever they, were, whatever they wanted to give <laughs> me, I'd bet them that I could drink a pint in under two seconds. And uh, so that's how I, I, I used to do it. But uh, they were getting a bit pissed off with uh, giving me money and they said it had to be alcohol. And I said, I'm not drinking a pint. I said, I'm just not drinking a pint. But I said, I'll drink a pint of, um, what were they called back then? Uh, fat Frog. Is this our, oh, jeez. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, I drank, uh, I, filled, I filled up the pint. And I drank it, like, straight down in under two seconds. Now, the minute it hit my belly, it just came straight back up again. <laughs> and all over the, all over the pub was, uh, yeah, I've little experience of drinking like that. Um, and we, we the same at the same time we went to Edinburgh. Uh, was it Edinburgh? Yeah, the grass match in Edinburgh. To um, oh, we went over to agricultural college over there, and uh, we went out in the night time, and everybody was drinking, and, and I would uh, take little whackers of a uh, perno, perno and blackcurrant. So and um, well, little things like that. But I never, I never actually. That, that walked into a pub and wanted to drink or anything. I have drank a little bit and I was drunk there. I broke, uh, I was, looked like it was touch and go whether I was going to be a champion jockey and uh, I broke my uh, wrist uh, kind of about two weeks before the end of the season and, and it shagged my chance of being champion jockey. So I um, getting at home bored one day and uh, Jerry Hogan, if you might know him, his blood yeah. is and lived uh, two doors down. And uh, his wife uh, had friends over and they had run out of drink. And I had loads of bottles of champagne. When you ride a winner, you get a bottle of champagne. So I had, you know, a dozen of them in, in the in the, in the the cupboard. So they came over and asked me, had I any, anything to beer? And I said, yeah, drive on. So that day, I drank champagne, brandy. I ended up, the last drink I had was... Um, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Tia Maria and Milk inside in Grand Nightclub in Cash, as you well know. Hey, some, some spot there. Yeah. <laughs> Grand Nightclub. And I got kicked out of the nightclub and uh, all in good, good in in fun fun ways. I just threw myself in the ground like, like a dog and uh, the bouncer said, enough is enough and threw me out. And then I walked from Cash to Borland. Uh, which is about what is it four, is it four or five miles at least, and a long, a long, a long way at the end of a a, a night of drink, and yeah, and uh, so I can't remember if I went to bed or not, but I was Pat Doyle was gone to Jack Dad was gone to the breeze with them, and I was going in to give him a hand in the morning, and uh, I was absolutely blue was the next morning uh, running around the place, and uh, that was the last time. Then. That was, it, that was enough for it. That was enough. Yeah, no, I drink, drink. Yeah, is, I, uh, I, never did, I never had the one for it or anything like that. I just, yeah. I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it, but it, but it had to be in taste. I, I hated the taste, but I never had the one for it. But I, they, they were the only experiences that I, I ever had. I, I it, it, they were enough. <laughs> I don't think we gave the two second for a, a pint of anything the credit. I've never understood this open your gullet expression. I've never been able to do it. Yeah. I, I can do it, yeah. I can op open up my, my, my whole throat. It just, it just flows straight down. No swallow or rustle, huh? Your new nickname. <laughs> We've got the title of our podcast straight away. I'm pleased with that one. <laughs> yeah. so, um, if you don't mind, I just want to... FCE, what we do is we put on um, events for people and what we do is we do it totally bespoke and seamless so the clients don't have to think of anything. So if you were to have a true FCE day at an event, any event in the world, no expense spared, what would the event be? I tell you the best day, sporting day. And, and, and Davey, I'll stop you there beforehand. Callum said he'd put this on for you as well. <laughs> no, but I... I, I 
there's loads of sports I'd love I'd love to see. I'd love to go to the Kentucky for the uh, or to the, the, the Breeders' Cup, all of that. But my experience, the best days sport for me is um, we go to Dublin the night before the All Ireland final. Now it's better if our if uh, hurling or football it it, it, it raises the bar completely if you, our our local team is playing our our, our county is playing. Um, uh, so you go up Saturday night, just stay out all night long, wake up the next morning about, let it be nine or half nine, ten o'clock, we're usually up at six o'clock every morning, so half nine, get up, have a big mass of fry, um, meet up the lads and walk down to the to the pitch. Um, the lads are drinking in the morning, you know, I have a couple of drinks and I, I just go along with them and you, the amount of people you meet, uh, from the countryside, you know, because Ireland is quite a, a, a close-knit um, place anyway. So you just meet a lot of people all enthusiastic about um, sport and racing and we have the crack. You go in and watch, in my opinion, the best sport that's ever played uh, in a marvellous stadium because no matter where you sit in Crow Park, you have a good seat. Uh, and uh, then that night you go and either celebrate or commiserate whether win, lose or draw, do you know what I mean? So that for me on a sporting day is, is the best day ever. Um, but we'll say I, I just love sports. I, I love to see sports. I, I would like, I grew, when I was younger, I was quite keen on basketball and I used, I used, I used to love, I mean, never played it or anything like that, but I used to, it used to be on Channel 4 um, yeah. quite a bit. And I used to watch quite a bit in Channel 4. Um, so I used to love basketball. And I'd often like to go to have seen like Kobe, Kobe Bryant when he passed away. I, I that touches me a little bit as well. I know he was a marvelous sportsman, but I, I could relate to you know I, I knew who he was and I watched him. And but I'm talking about back when when the, the Celtics were playing um, um, Larry Bird and all them guys. You know I I just loved lo- loved that, them couple of years. I was quite into basketball, so you know a big basketball match would be something or. Or maybe, you know, some people tell me American football, um, but it's quite stop start in American football. So yeah. we're, we're used to going to a game, hammer and tongs for 30, 35 minutes, 10 minute break, grab a cup of tea, and then a hammer and tongs for another 30, 35 minutes. No let um, up. No let up. Uh, you know, so to go and watch a, a, a Super Bowl or something and a stop start, stop start, I'm not sure if I'd, if I'd like that. But I would like to go to a Breeders' Cup. I'd like to go to a Breeders' Cup and meet Bob Baffert and, and all of these guys. I, I, I was looking up, I went to Saratoga to ride. They called off the race on the day, but it was a great experience to go there and, and see the place. But, you know, because you watch so much on the racing channels and things, but I was just delighted that's, to have that's, that's, one t- that's one thing I've done, actually, is actually road in Saratoga. It's some spots. Yeah. Um, it yeah. is some spot up there. Did you go over there for Gordon, did you? I. Uh, George Mahoney, um, Gordon had the horse, and um, but he he kind of stayed over because he was run, running a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Turned out to be an expensive episode for me because Davy's picked four events that we've got to take him to in the next. Yeah, no. Oh, just take him to the hurling. It's only in Ireland there you can give him a train fare, train fare from Cork up to from Yall up to um, Dublin there.